That's right. <laughs> All right, we are moving into Rachel Hollis momentum. I'm gonna shut this door back here too. All right, let's see what she's got to say. Hey guys, it's Rachel here and we are going into the next week of our next 90 day challenge and we go we if we're gonna I can't use words. It's fine. If we're gonna start, then we have to first talk about what like what is happening right now. Um, first of all, this is what my hair looks like when it air dries. And secondly, I shot the cover for my next book. Uh, comes out at the end of September. I shot the cover today and I'm not gonna tell you what it was, but it definitely involved um, my hair and makeup being destroyed. So um, I ended up washing my hair in a sink and I now smell. I smell like something, but I'm not going to tell you what it is because I want it to be a big surprise when we reveal this cover. But I just want you to know, like, why is the makeup on one side of your face stronger than on the other? It's just because I finished this book shoot, y'all. And um, I was like, I got to get this momentum video done. And so you're just going to get me as I am, as per usual. I hope that the content will far outweigh whether or not my hair is shiny. So this week we're talking about momentum, this idea of what it is and how it shows up for us in our lives. And for us in the company so much right now is about this idea of health. We're really focused on health. It's sort of the direction that the company continues to reach for as we think of not just emotional health, but mental health and physical health. And with the launch of the app next month, our, our heads are sort of in this space. And so I wanna create content that kind of speaks to what it is that we're doing. And I thought it would be cool to talk about momentum. Uh, this is something that can apply to any kind of goal. It could be something in your business, something in your personal life. This could be uh, something that you're trying to accomplish physically, or maybe you're trying to change you know, what's going on with you emotionally. But the idea is how do we get into a sort of cadence? How do we get a rhythm? How do we make those habits stick? Because I think we all have probably been in a place before where we're really excited about something. Like, let's say it's the new year and you're like, I'm going to do it this year. I'm going to go get the gym membership and I'm going to get super healthy and I'm going to eat only green juice and I'm going to like run a thousand miles and you have all these goals. And not only are you saying them, but you're so excited about the possibility of it, right? Like we've all been there where you're like, oh my, I can do this. And then two weeks later, you're looking at all this equipment and all these things that you've bought. You're looking at that gym membership maybe two months later, two weeks later, and you're like, where did it go? Where did that energy go? Where did that motivation go? Why don't I have the will to keep going? It's because motivation is fleeting. I hope that if you've worked with me long enough, you understand this idea. There's certainly ways to hack your motivation, but motivation is something that happens given a certain circumstance that you're inside of, right? You hit a big birthday, it's a certain time of year, it's a certain day of the week, or there's something outside yourself that is motivating you to do the thing that you need to do or want to do. Momentum. Momentum is this idea that you start to go, right? You start to move toward the direction of who you want to be and you start to pick up speed and it gets faster and faster. And now suddenly you have momentum and inside of momentum, it's not as hard to wake up anymore. It's not as hard to get up early. It's not as hard to motivate yourself to put the sneakers on because you're inside of this momentum. You don't need the motivation. So today, I'm not gonna dig into what momentum is because I feel like you're smart, y'all are smart people, you can Google it or you have some idea of what it would mean for your life if you were staying inside of the rhythm of who you wanna be instead of stopping and starting all the time. What I wanna talk about today is what do you do if you can't find momentum? 
What do you do if you had momentum at one point and you lost it? I mean, maybe that happened because of quarantine or or COVID or what's going on in the world. You were so you were so in it, right? You had the momentum and then it feels like everything got shaken up and it was taken away for you. So I want to talk about what do you do to get back the momentum when it's gone? And the third thing I want to talk about is how to keep momentum when you have it. So pull up a chair. Let's get ready. Let's get ready to rumble. Let's get ready to. I mean, look at this, look at this hair, you guys. Look at this hair, it's fine. Okay, here we go. I need some momentum to finally figure out how to blow out my own hair at 37. Let's talk about how to get momentum if you haven't ever gotten it before. I'm gonna use health as an example, but certainly this can apply to any area of your life. I really think that momentum is the child of consistency. Momentum is the child of consistency. It's like you can't just sort of launch yourself like a rocket and then have that trajectory maintained. You can't just sort of say like, ah, this, I'm gonna be really intense and I'm gonna launch this thing into the world and then that's gonna keep it going. Certainly your intensity around how you launch yourself, how you get excited when you start something, certainly that energy that you create when you're doing something new, that helps. That can push you so much further than you thought you could go. But we're not interested in starting. We're interested in sustaining. And to me, truly, in order to get momentum, you have to have consistency. You have to will yourself to show up and do the thing again and again and again and again until it's like the inertia of you pushing, 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 all of a sudden it begins to take over. And then it's easier than it was. And it's easier than it was for a lot of reasons, mostly because you've made a habit or a ritual of this thing that you wanna do. If you want momentum, there isn't a quick fix, there isn't a magic pill, there isn't something easy you can do. You are going to have to push yourself to be consistent. Consistent means that you show up regularly. You show up in the same way at the same time with at least the same amount of effort as you did the day before. Let me say it again. You show up at the same day, the same time with at least the same amount of effort as you had the last time. Now I hope that you sort of push yourself a little bit more, a little bit, a little bit extra. So all of a sudden, with all of this consistency, you start to see some real traction. I was at a conference years ago. It was the first time I ever got to hear John Maxwell speak. And it's like seared in my heart because it was such a special experience. And he said this thing that I have held on to ever since. He said, consistency compounds. Maybe some of you have heard me quote him before. Consistency compounds. It feels so often when we're being consistent with anything that we're not making any progress. You just keep showing up day after day, same time, same energy. Day after day, you keep showing up, you keep showing up, and then all of a sudden, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And then suddenly you see this exponential growth. It's like a hockey stick, right? It's going, going, going because consistency compounds. Momentum is the child of consistency. That compounding that happens, I believe that's the momentum taking over. Suddenly you don't need to force yourself to wake up at 5 a.m. Suddenly you don't need to make yourself sit down and work on the novel. Suddenly you don't need to make yourself do this. You don't have to push so hard anymore. It's like in Greek mythology, there is this story of Sisyphus. And Sisyphus is doomed to forever push a boulder up a hill. He's pushing, pushing, pushing. And I always think of this when it comes to goals that feel hard for us, is that Sisyphus is pushing this boulder up a hill. And for you, there are days when going on the jog again feels like pushing a boulder up a hill. But I always think of it as like you're pushing, you're pushing, you're pushing, and then one day, the boulder falls over the top. 
you get to the peak, it goes over the top, and now it has its own momentum. And now you don't have to even push it. And now if you would just stay in it, if you would just stay consistent, if you would just stay with the thing that you have been pushing, man, you will go faster than you ever imagined. So if you really want to figure out how to get momentum, you have to start and you have to stick with it. I'm sorry. I wish there was a cooler answer for you. I wish there was something where you could do one plus one equals four. But the reality is every single person that I know, every person that you admire that has built something, a family, a body, a business that has built something that they love, it's because they kept showing up. They kept showing up day after day after day. But the beauty, I swear to you, is that if you show up and you do it over and over and over again, the momentum will start to take over for you. Now, that was how do you get momentum? And I'm gonna finish this conversation by saying, how do you stay with it? How do you stay in the momentum once it's happening? But before I get there, I want to talk about what do you do? You're watching this right now and you're like, I've been there. And I would challenge, I would challenge you guys because my gut is that many of you have had momentum before. Maybe you're in momentum right now, gosh, I hope that you are. But my challenge is how many of you have had it before? How do you get it back when you've lost it? So I have two answers for this one. And the first one is for those of you who have had momentum before and you've lost it, I am going to tell you the ugly truth that you do not want to hear right now. You know exactly how to get it back. If you've had momentum, if you've been in that great place, if you've gotten to a place where you were making strides against your goal, if you've been in that place and you are no longer there, you know exactly how to get back to it. You do what you did last time. The problem is that when people lose momentum, they lose hope. They feel shame. They're mad at themselves for what they didn't do, what they didn't stick with, why they didn't keep showing up. And so instead of just sucking it up and being like, yeah, okay, I messed up. I did that thing. I'm human. I slipped. Instead of just saying that and getting back up and going, they decide that it would be better to wallow there on the ground. They want to lament how far they've fallen. Like I get this a lot from women in our community who They'll be like, oh, but in, in college, I was a runner. I was a long distance runner, and now I can't even walk to the end of the block. I'm so mad at myself because I let that go. And it's like, look, it's not one or the other. Yes, maybe you don't have the ability to run like you did in college, but what did you trade for? What was the thing that, and it's like you, you they keep digging, they're like, okay, well, I had three kids and I'm like, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. So you've had three kids and your ability, your, your desire to be a great mama and to show up for those kids and to be a good partner and all of those things, that's gotten in the way of the fact that you can't run anymore. So now you're gonna beat yourself up because you don't have that body when the reality is look at all that you've gained. Would you rather be a long distance runner and not have any of these things that you've achieved and accomplished? No, girl, let's figure out how to be a runner with who you are today. Let's decide what this looks like for you. Let's acknowledge that nothing was, nothing was for nothing. Does that make sense? Like, if you let go of a piece of you in order to have something else because you didn't know how to hold that many things at one time, great, cool, acknowledge it. The kids are older now, time to get back to yourself, time to get back to your love, time to do it again. What'd you do in college? Okay, well, I started running and it sucked and it was hot and I threw up the first two times and I kept showing up and then I got better and then I got blisters and then I lost my toenails, but gosh, I really loved it. And I kept showing up and I was consistent and I kept doing it and eventually I was in it. I was in the momentum, I was running regularly, I didn't have to think about it, it became who I was. You know exactly how to get the momentum back. The problem is that you know how hard it is now. It's not that you don't know how, it's that you know that it will be hard. And so rather than acknowledging the hardship, you get to stay here and beat yourself up for what you have lost. 
Man, if I would have started the business five years ago, if I would have gone back to school when she was in kindergarten, right? If I would have done this thing, if I would have, it's done. It's done. You are living the life that you were meant to live. The decisions that you made were what was required to get you to this moment right now. And you beating yourself up about what you should have done will not serve you. Acknowledge it and start to do what you did before. You wanna get the momentum back, then use exactly what you did last time. And maybe, God willing, you're smarter now. You're more mature. You're kinder to yourself. You're more graceful. So now you take on this challenge of getting the momentum back, but you do it in a way that's not as harsh as it was when you were 19. What a freaking gift. It was meant to happen just like this. So stop assuming that just because you have let go for a minute of something that it was never meant to be yours. There are seasons in life. And you with your three kids or you going through your divorce or you coming to grips with your health or you being honest with your family or you acknowledging who you are, whatever it is, there was a time and a season for what you went through and now you want your momentum back. You want your groove back. You want to remember that thing? Awesome. Stop fooling yourself. You know exactly what to do. The other option for this, the other option is you had momentum and you lost it. The other reason that you lost it, and I want to make sure that we consider this, is that maybe you lost momentum against something that was never meant to be yours. Or maybe the thing you were pursuing or the way you were pursuing it was not okay. Let me give you an example. I am positive right now that there are people watching this who are remembering the momentum that they used to have when they were a certain size. So when you were 22, you had this body and you had that butt and you had those arms and your boobs were so perky and your biceps were so ripped and you had six pack abs or whatever it was. You were younger and you had momentum that you covet, that you miss. You miss those days when you had, let's say, that body. But maybe the reason you lost momentum is that you understand that the way that you pursued that ideal was incredibly hurtful and unhealthy to you. I promise you there are people right now who had momentum in their eating disorder. There are people watching this right now who had momentum in starving themselves. There are people watching this right now who from the outside, they still loved that they looked a certain way or that people thought that they were a certain kind of person, but the momentum required to have that thing, that momentum was about to send you careening into the side of a building. And maybe it did. Momentum that is carrying you to destruction is not something that you should be coveting or wishing for. Maybe the reason you don't have momentum is because the way that you got the momentum was not healthy and did not serve you. And if that's real, I think there is beauty in figuring out what you need momentum for today. Change the destination. Change the thing that you're trying to achieve. Momentum can be incredible when you're headed in the right direction. So maybe the reason you lost it was because you know you were not supposed to aim for that in the first place. The other one I think about with this is maybe you've lost momentum because the destination is right, but the way that you're pursuing it or the path to pursue it is wrong. For me, I think of running as my example of this. I have been a runner, gosh, for maybe a decade. I will not bore you with the story because I'm sure so many of you have heard a lot about how I got into running and um, what it's meant in my life. And there was a time, a much, much more unhealthy version of who I am today that pursued running because I liked the achievement of it. It was so great for me on a lot of levels, but I can understand that I loved 
competing against myself. I loved, you did three miles last week and this week we're gonna do four. I love that. It gave me a high, it gave me a sense of purpose and a sense of self because I had this thing, right? Like I can claim that I did this really hard thing. And I have understood in the last couple of years that I do not want running to be a competition for me. Running is sacred to me. Running is therapy. Running is a gift. And if I am not able to run without competing with myself, then I don't want to do it. And so my approach to running now is so much the kids are making noise, so bear with me. Um, my approach to running now is so much more graceful. And some days I go out to do three miles and I run nine. And some days I go out to do nine miles and I run a mile and then I feel like I'm gonna pee my pants and then I have to walk for the next four miles. And there is a time and you know, I push three babies out of my body. Sometimes if you have, you know, too much water, then you feel like you're gonna pee your pants. It's a thing. Don't don't worry about it. You worry about you. But for me, there was a time in my life where I would get so mad at myself because I had somehow inadvertently failed myself because I didn't hit the mile number that I wanted to hit. And what I've come to understand is I can have, this is like in the last conversation, I can have momentum against this goal, but if I pursue it in the way that I used to, it's unhealthy for me. So I still have the goal, this gift of running and pushing myself, but I do it in a way that's so different now. And so maybe it's that you've lost momentum only because you need to figure out momentum in a new cadence. You need to figure out momentum on a new path. There's lots of ways to get to the same destination. And I believe that we can pursue our health goals from a place of love and encouragement and grace instead of shame and belittling and fear and not enough. I believe that and I practice it in myself. So if you have had momentum and lost it, maybe it's because of one of those three reasons. The last thing I wanna talk about is once you get momentum, how do you keep it? Because I don't know if you've ever experienced this thing where you, the momentum, 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 you're just doing it forever and it's great and it's good and you know it's good for you. And then just at some point, you're just not as interested in that thing anymore, even though that thing is really good for you. And it's part of the life that you claim that you want to have. My advice here, and I think it's super normal, I've definitely encountered it many times, is I need two things when it comes to staying in uh, staying sort of motivated and having that momentum continue to carry on. And for me, I need traction and I need like, I was going to say spice. I don't, I don't know what I did this. I need like spice I need a little spice in my life. I need to shake it up. I need to mix it up. I need it to come from a different way. So how I would think of this is I truly believe if you're not making traction against goals in your life, that's where you lose. That's where we lose motivation. You have to see that you've made progress. You have to. Progress is like, it just gives us so much and it helps us to stay on track. And I have this belief that so many people fall off of their health goals because truly, because they just don't see any progress and they give up. Because progress is such a gift and it's like, oh, that, okay, that worked. I did these things and I did this and it worked. And so that helps you to stay in it because you're like, no, I know this thing works. I'm gonna stay consistent until it can become momentum. In order for you to have traction, I mean, there's a whole, read, girl, here, if you haven't read this, Girl Stop Apologizing is all about how to, true, to achieve a goal. And I talk about this idea of how do you actually make progress? How do you make traction? Get it from the library. You don't have to buy it. Just get it from the library. But for me, I, I have to have some traction against the thing that I am trying to pursue. And that comes from constantly, I don't know another way to say it, but like constantly checking my work. Not, not my actual work, but like stepping back and looking at your life from 50,000 feet. Stop stepping back and looking at your business from high above. Look at your relationship from up here. You're down in it. You're in the feelings. You're in the emotions. You're in the space. What does it look like to come above it all? 
and look at it like, oh, okay, I see, yep. Last Tuesday was when I started having trouble and that, I see what I did there. And so this week I'm gonna do this thing. Like you have to sort of look at it from up here in order to see how things are going. And also, and I know this is hard, but you, you have to acknowledge what you have done. Plenty of you are making all kinds of traction, but because you're so freaking hard on yourself, you don't even know it. Acknowledge it. If you have moved a quarter of an inch in the direction you wanna go, throw yourself a freaking party. Celebrate. Hey, awesome. You had tea last night instead of vodka, like good for you. Celebrate little tiny things because those little tiny things add up to something amazing. Your consistency compounds. Consistency doesn't ask how much did you move. Consistency doesn't say, ooh, she made, she moved a mile that time. Consistency says she showed up. She showed up and she put effort into forward movement. That's what consistency looks like. So give yourself credit for what you have done. The other piece here, at least for me personally, to stay inside of momentum, it's got to start to look like different things. So let's talk about physical health for me because that's an easy one to explain. I have to change up my workout styles, my workouts in the garage gym, how I run, where I run. I will, I'd say probably once a quarter, kind of restructure how I'm doing it. Maybe, I'm sure, I'm sure there are plenty of people who just do the same thing over and over. I just get bored and I need a little shake up. If you can do the same thing forever and ever, amen, and you're great, do you. But if you're like me and you lose your momentum because you're just like, I'm just sick of doing this, try something else. Try a different style, try a different thing, try, see what happens. I tend to, when I figure out, like I talked to you guys last week about nutrition, and if you haven't watched that episode, please go watch. But I tend to, um, kind of eat the same things over and over. I know what works for my body, eat them over and over. And then every once in a while, I'm like, okay, let's try. I'm getting real sick of the same lettuce. I don't know if this sounds dumb, you guys, but I get real sick of the same lettuce or I'm getting sick of the salad or I'm getting sick of the same dinners. Okay, so now I've got to go on a little bit of a hunt to find some new stuff that's going to feel good for me, that's going to still bless my body in the way that I want it to, but just so I don't fall off the rhythm because I'm like, oh, I'm bored with salad. I guess I better go have a cheeseburger. You know what I mean? So if you're in that space, maybe you ask yourself if you just need to spice it up. I mean, I guess it's like anything else, right? You're just gonna have to do it. You're just gonna have to do it. You know that. If you're watching this video right now, if you saw the title and you were like, dang it, I need to learn about how to get into that pattern, you know. It sucks to get there. I won't lie to you, it's hard. It's hard to make change, it's hard to pivot, it's hard to create a life that you wanna live, but God, is it worth it. It's worth the effort. And I want you to know that every single day, I'm right here with you, choosing it as well. This is not easy for any of us, but it gets easier when you can start to get into this pattern, okay? So start and stick and keep doing it and acknowledge your progress and shake things up when you need to because the exponential growth that you can have when you get into this space, when you get into, when you hit your stride, when you get your cadence, it's magic. All right, you guys, I hope that that was helpful to you. I hope that you are enjoying Next 90 Days. I want to remind you that our last weekend or the last day of Next 90 is July 3rd. So you have that much time to dig into all these classes. The challenge goes away um, at the end of it. So make sure that you're watching all the things and uh, tell your friends. It's totally free. Uh, and we have one, two, three, four, five more weeks, five more weeks to go. So jump in while you can, make sure that you enjoy it and do the work. Which of these weeks was most powerful to you? What do you need to work on? Now is the time. 
I hope that you will commit to working on yourself. All right. I love you guys. I will see you next week and have a great one. <laughs> that was a terrible send off. Y'all have a great week. I'll see you later. I thought for sure she was going to say, I love you and I'm rooting for you. That's what she usually says. So I was like, that's all she said. <laughs> that was funny. Like she like killed a whole 30 minute segment. And then at the end she's like, I got nothing. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> But then also I kind of love her for that because it just reminds me like sometimes you guys, when you're like talking about what you know you want to talk about, you're just like, I need to wrap this up and you just like lose those final words. I've totally been there before. You're like jamming on a topic and then all of a sudden you're like, all right, I think that's all I got to say about that. <laughs> like I've done that to you guys before where I've just been like going and going and then you'd be like, all right, that's all I got on that topic. <laughs> Um, okay, I love today's topic. I don't know about you guys, but gosh, I needed that. Like, whoo, uh, big stuff happening right there. Like, really um, hit me where I probably needed it the most. Um, just even talk, like, what are the odds we're talking about running after I just ran? And then talking about, like, consistency. And, like, even though we took the weekend off, we come right back in here and we hit it. So it's like, um, but let me back up, let's back up and like really go through like what she talked about and, um, yeah, let's talk about it. Okay. So obviously she said beginning is momentum. The first thing that she really talked about was momentum is the child of consistency, right? So like, to me, it's the, um, like being a child is like the surface, you know, like, you know, they can just play and they're in like the surface of it, but like underground the only way that you're going to continue that surface play is by staying consistent okay so when she says child i think of child as like fun and light and playing and like all the all the pairs are away right but the only way we can achieve that is if we're consistent as an adult you know like the adult is the consistency so that the child can play like think of almost like you're the adult and so you have to stay consistent so your child continue to play without worries, right? Like you wanna kind of keep them over here playing and having fun. And so we as the adult need to stay consistent and do what we need to do over here so that that can happen. And so if we want momentum to be playful and to be fun, to be exciting, then we have to put in the work over here with consistency. Okay, and that's how we can continue to have that fun momentum in a playful way is if we are strict and serious when we're an adult being consistent. Okay, so I really loved that part. Um, just the way she kind of worded it, like really, really kind of resonated with me of putting it as like a child of like, this is like the Im immature part. Like momentum is kind of like the immature section but once you delve into it what you need is really consistency okay so as you are more consistent momentum will naturally be created okay so um sustaining is also like one thing that she's talked about so like i think sustaining and consistency kind of go together like as you're staying consistent you're sustaining a level of whatever you set for yourself, right? So um, if you're sustaining that level of consistency, momentum will be created, okay? Um, I love I love that she even referenced John C. Maxwell. We actually really need to get into him as well. If you guys have never heard of him or never read any of his stuff, I actually have one of his quotes. Uh, yeah, this one. Um, I have one of his quotes wrote down on my thing and it's, um, your setback is now your springboard. Um, which I love that. I just thought that was like, like, I always think of it as like your struggle is your gift. Um, so whatever you're struggling in right now, you actually can use it as a gift later on to help either yourself through hard times or other people through hard times. Like the struggles that I've faced already in my life have helped me springboard this time into consistency. Okay. 
Um, but it came from my setbacks before. It came from the struggles that I've had before have allowed me to know how to handle this time. Okay, so the struggles that you've had before are now your springboards to handle now. If you've never handled a situation like here, just know that this is your setback and your springboard is going to happen later on. Okay, so maybe you've already experienced the struggle and now you're using it as a springboard to um, get through this. So obviously a springboard to me is like gymnastics. I don't know if you guys ever like no like gymnastics like so you hit the springboard before you vault so you hit this giant thing that will literally launch you into the future or into forward momentum okay so springboard think of it like that um when you guys are watching gymnastics like the springboard is the thing that they hit before they hit the vault to do their magic right to do their um tumbling or whatever okay so you think of your life as a springboard, but these setbacks are your springboard. These struggles are your springboard, okay? So in maybe you've already experienced struggles that are now springboarding you through this time, like myself. I've already struggled things, right? I've already been through something kind of like lockdown, quarantine, like, uh, you know, something like that. I've already had these kinds of things taken from me. So when it came up, I was like, oh, I've already been here before. I can springboard through this quarantine. Let's start warrior hour. Let's work out harder. Let's, I used it as a springboard because I knew I've already been here before. <laughs> I've already done this before. I refuse to let it own me. So I used it as a springboard. But maybe you've never experienced something like this before. So you're in the struggle. Okay, so you're like, holy crap, this is all new. I've never had my rights taken away. I've never had, you know, quarantine. I've never had to do this at a grocery store. So you're in the struggle. But just know that in the future, there's going to be a, an instance that comes up that's another struggle. That's going to be your springboard because you've already dealt with it now. Okay, so maybe you're, depends where you're at, depends if you've had struggle before in your life or not to whether you're in the springboard or whether you're in the struggle, but just know that whatever you're experiencing right now is going to springboard you in your future endeavors, okay? So you can use the struggle that you have right now, and there's gonna be a moment in the future that you're gonna recognize, you're gonna go, ooh, I've dealt with this before. I've done this before. I can deal with this again, okay? So John C. Maxwell is an amazing, um, that's like one of my favorite quotes from him. I write it down and I put it right here. Just to remind myself that when you're in the struggle, it's actually your gift. Feel the struggle and use it to help and, and use it um, towards positivity rather than negativity as well. Um, but kind of bringing that into here is that consistency compounds is the quote that she used from him. Same thing, you guys. When you're just constantly using all of this information to consistently move yourself forward, not consistently hold yourself back, you're using it as a springboard. You're using it consistently to compound positive positivity in your life, okay? Rather than allowing it to compound into negativity, you have to take all of this information, the struggle, the, the happiness, the uncertainty, and you have to use it to springboard you into positive consistency. Is that making sense? I feel like those words are getting a little twisted, but I'm hoping that it's coming across correctly. Um, but also, I love um, start it and stick with it. Like, right? Duh. <laughs> we can't just start something. Um, that would be like me starting Warrior Hour and after 30 days, closing it out, right? Just being like, all right, we're just not going to do that anymore. But you guys are still in the struggle, right? Like I had to stay consistent. We had to keep going with consistency. And every once in a while, we got to shake it up, right? Every once in a while, I'm like, yo, we need a different thing. We need to try something different. Let's pull out the tarot cards. Let's pull out the IM cards. Let's do music today. Let's do a workout. Like we got to shake it up because if we just came here and did the same thing all the time, probably get pretty boring right? Or it would just start to feel like, I feel like my voice would probably go in one year and out the other sometimes, you know, like a parent would be. <laughs> um, and so we got to switch it up. We got to find different ways, different videos, different people, different voices, different 
whatever, because you never know when they might say something that could bring a new light to you. Okay. So that's why I'm always kind of searching for new stuff because I know that, that it's super important to keep spicing it up, to keep switching it up, give you guys different options, give you different outlets, give you different ways of thinking just to maybe be like, Oh, I never thought of it that way. Oh, that's kind of cool. Cause there's sometimes you guys, you could hear something a million times from one person and then all of a sudden somebody else says it in a different way. And all of a sudden you're like, Oh, <laughs> that's what they meant. You know, that's what I was supposed to be listening to. That's what I was supposed to be talking about. Yeah. Carly, go ahead. So also like we're not getting paid to come here like we're choosing to come here too like that's like you keep saying like you keep it interesting for us but like jenny we're here like because we want to be here like all of us have kids or families or things we have to do but like we're not you know we are just showing up every day because we want to be here so just so you I don't feel like you have all this pressure but like we could choose to do something else with our time, but we're spending it with you. So don't put too much pressure on yourself. <laughs> okay, where did that come from? You guys save that for like the end. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you guys know I get so awkward when it's like love coming at me for real. Um, you know, it's so funny that you can say that because I just said that to Mike. <laughs> um, I was like, man, it's so weird to think that these girls show up to hear me talk. <laughs> like, choose to show up. Like, I'm like, people sit at work and listen to me, Mike. I was like, people are like driving and like choose to put me on, like, and make an effort to like come here. I'm like, how cool is that? And it was funny because I told them, I was like, I... I never really struggled with confidence or I never realized that I struggled with confidence until I gained confidence. Does that make sense? Like I didn't realize I didn't have confidence in certain areas until all of a sudden, like you guys started coming and it actually started building my own confidence. I was like, wow, these girls like legit want to hear what I have to say. Like we, we, we work together, like we do this. And I'm like, how cool is that? It actually started to build my own confidence in being like, I'm on the right track. I'm doing the right thing. Like this is the right way. And like, so I started to really feel like myself. Like I come, I talk to you guys, I share life stories about my life. Like when I first started doing these videos, I was so nervous. I didn't want to say the wrong thing. I was like, made sure I made little notes on like everything I was going to talk about, you know? And now I feel so comfortable. Cause like, I know you guys are here to come and do this. Like you just said, like, it's so cool to even hear that from another perspective. Cause like, it took me a while to realize that like you guys choose to come here and after months <laughs> of still showing up and like, even though life can continue going on or maybe you're going back to work, but like you're still showing up here and it's like, dude, it's so freaking cool. So I thank you so much for saying that because it is really cool. Absolutely. Like, um, but I need you guys just as much, just so you guys know. Like, it is a mutual love both ways. Like, as much as you guys love to come here, I love to be here. Like, I, this is absolutely what I love to do. And it's so cool to know that I send you guys off of here being like, you're about to go make changes in your day or somebody else's day or your life. Like, I feel good about the way I send you guys out of here, which makes my life fulfilled. You know, it makes me feel whole. It makes me feel good knowing that like, okay, so we have, let's see, four, so 12, 15 people on here. And I'm like, okay, so that's 15 people that walk off of here in a positive mindset. Maybe that's 30 people we can affect. Maybe if they each affect one person, you know? Okay. So maybe that's, 30 people. And then if we can affect those 30 people, then maybe we can affect 60 because maybe that's one more person that we're passing on. And so I just like keep thinking that. And I love that. That's like the coolest thing about it is like the consistency that we're creating here is compounding so much further than we can even imagine. Right? Like imagine the people in your life that had you not been coming here, what would have been going on in your household? You know, how would your 
whole quarantine had, like, how would that have went for you had none of this been in your life? Because I can tell you right now, Mike and I probably would have been drinking every single night, probably would have been hung over just about every single day, probably would have fell behind on our bills rather than being ahead on our bills like we are right now, which feels really good, probably would have been through multiple family fights, you know, just because we're cooped up in the freaking house staring at each other, hung over, and whatever, but the fact that we're not. We're not hungover. We're actually, I'm doing live videos every day. Mike does live videos every day. We work out all the time. We're, we're pushing to be better people. We're trying to figure out how we can help our community, you know? And it's like, how different would you have been had you not been here? And I think the same thing for myself. How different would I have been had I not been here through all this? And so it's a mutual. It's a, it's like, as much as I'm feeding you guys, you guys feed me to, to stay on point as well. So it's super cool. And it's cool to even hear her talk about momentum and consistency because that's exactly what we're doing. Like, that's what I was thinking when she was like, you got to be consistent. And I was like, dude, we show up every freaking Monday. We show up every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And if you didn't show up, you catch the recording or you're still posting in the challenge group that you got your workout in or your meal or like whatever it is, like the consistency is here. Like we have to recognize we're doing it. Like what she's suggesting, I hope every single one of you guys give a pat on your back because this is what you're doing. Like consistency is already happening. Bye, Gary. <laughs> um, and so I think that's really important for us to recognize, right? Like so much work is happening right here in this group. And that's like, it's, it, it's heartwarming, right? Like you have to be like, wow, this is so cool to be part of to be part of women that are actually like, go, oh, let's band together and, and get through this. Let's band together and, and rise up out of this. Rather than had I not had Beachbody in my life or you guys in my life, and I'm thinking of the friends that I had originally before I started Beachbody or everything, we probably would have been out drinking. We probably would have been um, out partying and not caring and not doing anything for society or not doing anything like, I probably would have fallen deeper into a depression and anxiety and uncertainty. But the fact that I have all of you guys right here and we have each other to be like, all right, they're fighting it too. Like we're in this together. Like it's not just me out here fighting it. You got all the girls too, to stay consistent with. And I think there's like so much power in that. Um, I hope you guys agree with that. Like there's something about having this gang of girls over here knowing they're doing it too like you're like all right I, at least if like no one in my household or no one in my family or no one in my other group of friends would ever understand what's happening I at least have these girls here I at least have this right here that I know they're working that I know they're making decisions maybe we're not perfect because I'm not you guys don't ever think that but I'm working because I know I got you girls because I know I'm looking at you guys going like they're looking at me and I'm looking at them and we've got each other's back, you know? Um, and that's super cool because you guys like power in numbers. Absolutely. Absolutely. Like you have numbers right here and you have so much power right here, right behind your back. Okay. So don't ever forget that you are not alone even if you maybe feel like it sometimes, but you can always come on here and feel like part of something and part of something that's going to want you to be a better person. You know, like if nothing else in your life is going right, you at least have your safe zone right here. Right? Like you have this place to come and at least feel empowered or motivated, you know, as little as, silly as that word is, when I come here and I look at all you girls, like, how can I not feel inspired? How can I not feel motivated? How can I not want to get up off the couch and at least drink my shit or, 
you know, do a workout or go for a walk or a run or read something positive. Because I know all of you guys are. Right? How cool is that? You have this, this place. And I know it's cool because I see so many women out there that don't have it or that won't trust me yet to come into it. They're like, no, 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 I'm good. And I'm like, but you're not good because you're not getting the support. I can see you over there by yourself. Why are you doing that? Why are you sitting over there by yourself when you could easily come and sit at our table? You know, you got to wear Because we're stubborn. What did you say, Kristen? <laughs> because we're stubborn. I know, I know. I'm so stubborn, you guys. Like, and I like have always been like super anti. Um, so I've always been a little bit of a rebel, like just in my nature, like I've always been like, oh, everybody's doing that. Well, then I'm going to go do this. <laughs> like, it's just like, um, always been in my blood. Even like, I see it in Derek, even like when I tell him to go do this, he does this. Like, and I'm like, oh, that's me and him. Like whenever somebody tried to tell me I couldn't do something, I was like, well, <laughs> watch me, you know, like I was always kind of a little bit of a rebel. Um, and so it took me kind of a long time to let that down to, to want to actually do something like Beachbody. Cause I was like, Oh, I couldn't imagine doing that. But I fell in love with it myself. And then I started being like, wait, but if I have girls that resonate with me, then I can create Beachbody to be whatever I want. Right? Like, so once I started collecting girls that were like me, I actually started loving it a lot more. Like, we don't look like any other team. That's okay. There's a lot of teams out there that are like totally different from ours. That's okay. That's not our team. We are what we are. Like we're over here and I, and I know a lot of you guys are a little rebellious. I know a lot of you guys are a little hard freaking women, like hard headed women, which I love you guys. I love your hard headed, like stubbornness. I know you guys are. That's why you're attracted to me. That's why you're on my team is because you're a freaking hard-headed, bull-headed woman. That's probably why you were attracted. You're like, hey, she's kind of a ball buster. I kind of like that about her, you know? And you're like, I think I need that in my life, right? And at first you're like, oh no, I'm the ball buster. And then you're like, wait, we're all ball busters, you know? And when you kind of realize that like actually power in numbers is so much cooler than trying to be a ball buster by yourself, it's actually really cool to be in a group of women that are all tough, tough. Like you got some freaking tough women on this call right now. Like I'm looking at faces and I'm just like instantly like flashing through like some of your guys' lives. And I'm like, dude, she's so fucking tough. Sorry, I just dropped the F-bomb. Like she is tough. She's tough and she's tough and she's tough. I'm like, I know what she's been through and I know what she's been through. I was like, oh, like we are tough freaking women right here right? And it can be a little intimidating for sure for somebody new. But I think once they come in and they realize that actually our hearts are so freaking tender, like we're, we're tough out here, but once you come in, we just love you. <laughs> like we're just going to coddle you and like rub you with all, all of our goodness. Um, you realize that we're not so scary, right? And you realize that the other women that you thought were super tough aren't so scary either. And you're like, oh, we're just tough women. That's why you're here, right? Like that's what brought you here is because you have something inside of you that is like this burning fire of tough, right? Like no sissy woman could come in here and be like, nah, I don't need any. We would be like, no, 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 ain't happening. Do, 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 do. We would like shut that down so quick, right? Like you have to be tough to be here. And that's not for everybody. And that I'm totally okay with losing a few people that aren't tough enough to be here. Because you gotta be kind of tough to be here, right? Like sometimes all the work that we do can feel really icky. Like we've been through it before. We're like, oh my God, like, this work is hard, right? Like we've had that like, uh, about two weeks ago with the whole worry thing. We were like, oh, like it was crazy. It was messing with our brains, right? But we're tough women. So we worked through it. And then here we are on the other side of it, becoming even tougher, right? Not everybody can do that. That's why they sell other things, 
You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Tessa, did you hear me? <laughs> um, you guys, it's tough being here. It's tough doing the work. It's tough being into Beachbody. Being a Beachbody coach is not for everybody. It's tough being consistent, right? It's hard. It's really, really hard being consistent. And that's why it's not for everybody. A lot of people don't have the work ethic you do. A lot of people would quit by now. A lot of people would stop showing up. But here you are, showing up. You want to know why? Because you're a warrior. Woo, woo. <laughs> For real, you guys. You're a warrior. Like, recognize that. Be like, yo, I'm still showing up. I'm staying consistent. Check me out. Look at me. Who would have thought I could do this? Who would have thought I would still be showing up? Because I know the me four years ago would have never still been showing up. I would have easily canceled multiple warrior hours for whatever reason. Too tired, didn't want to get up. The, the excuses, I probably make up lies as to why I canceled some days. I'd be like, oh, I don't feel good. But in reality, I just didn't want to get up. That would have been me four years ago. But with consistency and confidence building and all of this stuff and all the work that I put in, I surprise myself sometimes. I'm like, huh, I am capable of that. Oh my gosh, look at me, I am capable of showing up every day. Oh my goodness, look, I am capable of running two miles. Huh, who knew? Right? But I wouldn't have ever realized that I had consistency, motivation, momentum, movement, and my gang right behind me. Right? How cool is that? How cool is that? And like, to me, sometimes I'm like, this is just the beginning. Like, even though I've been coaching for four years, to me, this is just the beginning of our team doing big things or doing cool things or getting together. Like I have so many like envisions for our future. I'm just trying to wait until we can hang out again. <laughs> I have so many ideas of things that I want to do and get together and like create and and do with you guys and just waiting until we can do it again. But there's so much to come. So much to come. We're just getting started. We're literally just scratching the surface, building our confidence, building our grounding, rooting ourselves with each other. And then you guys, as soon as it as soon as it comes, the sun, the water, all the things, we're going to sprout and we're going to grow so freaking beautiful. But right now, we're laying the groundwork. We're putting the soil on. We're planting the seeds. We're building a foundation right now. And soon, we're going to grow, right? And then we have seeds. And those seeds are going to fall off of our trees and they're going to be planted, and then they're going to grow. And then all of a sudden, you guys, we're going to have a forest of trees growing, of people growing, and we're going to get bigger and bigger and bigger, right? But we have to build the foundation now. We have to have the core so freaking strong here, here, for it to grow correctly, right? So it's worth putting in the work now and being in the core, and then imagine how much work and how many people we can affect from here it's gonna be beautiful but we gotta do the work first right we have to do the work ourselves first we have to be willing to change to stay consistent to be and live it way before we can ever get anybody else to come in with us we lead from the front right always lead from the front it's easy to say oh you need to work out you need to do this or you could say, come with me. I'm doing this. Why don't you join me? This is what I'm doing. Why don't you come and join me too? Okay. There's so much power in asking people to join you rather than telling people what to do. Right? The reason why I'm here for warrior hours is I'm saying, hey, come join me as I do this Rachel Hollis 
you know, 13 week challenge rather than saying, hey, you guys should do that. Hey, everybody should be watching every Monday, just so you guys know, are you guys watching out there? You know, and instead I'm saying, hey, meet me Monday. We're gonna watch it together. I'm in it with you. Just like Rachel said, she's in it too. She's surviving too, right? Like that was cool to be like, yeah, you're right. Her hair looks crazy. She's definitely been in quarantine. <laughs> You know, you're like, yeah, she's in it with us, right? <laughs> um, and it's, so it's cool to have that, to know she's in it with you, rather than her saying, well, I'm still in my business, I'm still running my business, but here's some videos for you guys if, if you're struggling. No, she's struggling, right? She's struggling and she's sharing her, her thoughts through it. Makes it feel a little bit more heartfelt, right? Mm -hmm. So I think the same thing here and the same thing for you guys in your families or in your communities or in your circles, it's easy to tell people what to do. It's so much more important to show people what to do. Okay. I was going to say that, like, I take that into my work. So I manage all these people, but they're not my employees. They're my team. They are my employees, but they're my team. And everybody has a job to do, but I give them that responsibility and ownership and what we're doing with our branch that right now I'm gone. And I've literally, I think I've talked to them twice since I've been out, but they're keeping everything moving because they know my expectations of them. They know what needs to be done daily and they're motivated to do it because I've chose those people like to work for me is about the same as here. Like you better have a backbone and you better be able to take some shit because that's just who I am. Like I'm not going to take a less than of what I know I'm capable of doing because that's my bar and that's where I set it. So taking that into work, I mean, and it set me up that I've sat at home the last two weeks and I've not had to worry about anything. I know they're doing what they need to do. I've set them up to be successful in doing it. And it's a hard world out there. And what we're working in and doing right now is a job, but they're out there every day grinding because they don't want to disappoint me. And it's not, they don't want to disappoint me because they're afraid of what it is. They don't want to disappoint because we have mutual goals. Right. Yeah. And we've like worked for those together. It's like, oh no, Tessa, I don't want Tessa to yell at me. It's like, I want to impress Tessa. I want her to come mm -hmm. back and know that she's coming back and we've handled everything. Like, and that is mutual respect. Like, you know what I mean? Like yep. that's cool because they know you work hard when you come in there. Now, if you didn't work hard and you just left and then came back and be like, why isn't everything done? They'd be like, why would we do that, you know? But they know you work hard. So in order for them to keep up with what you were doing when you were gone, they know they're gonna have to work hard to get that in line. And so I love that. And it's a team, right? Yes. Exactly. And it's like about empowering your team too, yeah. you know? And that's like one thing, like, I mean, I make sure our, and it's so funny, cause you like said, our team here is different than anybody else because my team at my store, just within our district, we have like five stores. My store is so completely different than the other stores. Like we have a group chat that we text each other all day. Like everybody knows what's going on with everybody. No other store has that. Like there's people come into our store and they're like, wow, like you guys all like kind of work together and you don't just like, well, that's mine to do. And it's not, I don't do, have to do what you have because that's not the mentality that I set. Like mine is, if somebody needs help doing something, if you have time to do something for somebody else, I expect you to be doing it. I don't expect you to just be concerned about yourself and what you got going on for the day. Like I will not ask anybody to do anything that I myself am not gonna do. I'll go clean the freaking toilets. I'll go clean the bathroom. We all have a to-do list that we all have to do during the day. I, I will go do it before anybody else does it. But if I do that, I then expect that you're going to do that also. I'm just not going to be the one like, oh, I'm going to go do it and then don't expect you to do it. No, I'm leading from the front for my team. And like, everybody's just like, can we come work at your store? 
because it's totally different. Like we have fun during the day. Like we talk, we hit our sales goals. If even if we don't hit our sales goals the last few months, we've not hit our sales goal just because it's been so, so, so hard with everything going on, but they put the effort in and they're out there every day working their butts off. I'll buy them lunch the first Friday of the next month because that gives them momentum and motivation. And it might seem like, oh, it's just a lunch, but that's my appreciation to them. And it's something I don't have to do, but I do it for them. And that's how I keep my people. Recognition. Dude. Yes. Recognition is so important. Like recognition is like the underlying thing that kind of keeps you motivated is like somebody recognizing you. Somebody saying like, hey, you're doing a great job. Hey, I see you're doing hard work here's a little recognition or a little uh, achievement or gift, you know? Um, Nicole, Nicole, uh, Tessa works at Fast and All. Yeah. I don't know if you saw that, Tessa. <laughs> yeah, I was just getting ready to answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I work at Fast and All, which, I mean, there's 2,700 stores. And, I mean, we're all over the world in every country. And I guarantee our store is, m like, it's probably less than 0 0.2, 0 0.0021% as to how stores function. Because most of the stores function on a hierarchy of I'm the manager, you're an account specialist, you're an outside specialist, you're a full-time support, you're a part-time support. And that's not how a lot of them operate. I actually, when I first became a manager, went to a store in Oil City, PA, and their boss, and I do the same and it, it was, I've used this motto is like, I will push to get my people paid for, for what they're worth, not for what they sh expect that they should be paying them because I'm paying them basically for my time, for my freedom, because his motto was I'll come in. Like we as managers have to work 7:30 to five every day. He's like, but if I have the right people that are working for me and I'm paying them right and I'm treating them right, those people aren't going to care if I need to leave at three o'clock to go pick my kid up and go watch a soccer game. And I've used that motto and it works. Yeah. Like I actually care for my employees. I care what happens to them. I care in their lives. Like we talk about our families, but I mean, we are a family ourselves mm -hmm. and that's what we've grown to be and we all do mutually respect each other and what we're doing in that position I like that's how my mom is too my mom so my mom does HR for a bank and like some of the stuff like some of her employees have been around for like 20 I mean like people work there and then they work there for like their entire lives just because the perks of the job you know like the the commute or the little like just being part of the bank is a perk. Like, and I feel like, and it's just like, cause you're a little family. Like same thing here is like what you create when you're all together matters. Yep. You know, like the energy that you create, cause we've all worked at places where you feel instantly replaceable, right? Like I've worked at places where like, if I wasn't taking their money and at the cash register, boom, somebody else is, see you later. You're just a number and a fly on the wall. We could retrain somebody else to answer a phone, scoop. You know, like I've been in those jobs. And again, I didn't really care about that job. I didn't put my full effort or my full potential. Now I'm always a good worker naturally because of myself, but I didn't back that business, right? Like, like something like for Tessa where she's created a family and like, maybe they're not like passionate about ethanol, but they love, you guys love your team. You've created a, a safe zone for you guys to work, coexist and work and function that feels right. You know? Um, and I think that's so important. Absolutely. I think that's really important. That's really cool. That you shared it too. Just to put it like into a different perspective too, you know? Um, okay. So I think I kind of talked about everything that she talked about that I wanted to except one last little thing, but I know it's like 930. So I'm going to say it just like super quick, but okay. So she was talking about um, consistency in the wrong direction real quick. 
Okay, so there are plenty of times where we are consistent in the wrong direction. And the, can, and the example I'm gonna use, and we'll finish out with this, is Shailene Johnson. So if you've ever done like Pio or Turbo Kick or um, any of her programs. So Shailene originally used to be this huge health fanatic. Like she would be, you know, in the gym for hours at a time to make sure her body was always rock hard, solid, ab ripping pictures and all this stuff. And she realized that she was actually feeding a culture of health obsession, of an unhealthy health obsession, where people are so unhealthy in their mental state because they're trying to achieve something that's unnecessary. Ripped hard abs, rock hard, um, you know, bodies, always sweating and, and flexing and pumping and, and like, she was like, it was so unhealthy. She goes, I was so unhealthy at my healthiest. When people asked me how I got there, I had to lie to them and it, it, because the way that I had to actually stay there was so unhealthy. So remember too, that consistency in the wrong direction can be just as dangerous, okay? So you have to find a balance as well. So she actually now, like on her social media, you might have to like scroll through some of her stuff on Instagram, but she has a lot of stuff about being healthy, not being obsessively healthy, but just being healthy. And she goes, I won't even, she goes, I don't show, I don't show pictures of me with, ripped abs and flexing my muscles anymore she goes because i know that's sending an image that girls are trying to achieve something that is unhealthy be like that and to consistently be like that and so it's interesting too of like consistency can also take you down a path that you shouldn't be so you need to double check as well what you're being consistent about where that consistency is taking you. Is it always taking you still in a positive route? And there might need to be a check-in every once in a while. All right, I need to check in and see, is it, I'm being consistent, but is it taking me in the direction that I want to? Or am I being consistent in something that is just constantly making me feel shame and guilt? Or feel, um, you know, am I constantly going down a place that's trying to get me to somewhere where I have no destination? You know, like constantly trying to achieve more abs, more abs, more abs. And I'm so freaking, um, I'm working out all the time. I'm doing ab workouts all the time. But why? What am I trying to produce from that? What's that consistency creating for myself? Is it healthy? Probably not. Okay. So double check what you're being consistent with. Double check how the consistency is affecting you. Okay, and like she said, take a step back sometimes and like view it from up here and just double check. Like, okay, is my consistency with, with obsessing over my health, this is actually doing more damage to me than it should be, right? Because it's mentally built and shame anytime I slip up or miss something, I just beat myself up because I wasn't consistent in this area. But the consistency I'm trying to create is unhealthy. Right? So double check that consistency. Okay? So I just really wanted to make sure I reiterated that because when she started talking about it, I instantly thought of Shailene Johnson. And she goes into more, so you can pop on her Instagram and you might have to like shift through some of her stuff or maybe she's got a, sometimes she has a, a YouTube as well that you could maybe find something, but she talks about it quite a bit about how the image that she was creating originally was actually an unhealthy obsession with being healthy. Okay, and so that is a possibility as well. If you are so obsessed with being so healthy that it's actually unhealthy for your mental state. Okay, so you gotta find your balance and you gotta figure out what your consistency is actually compounding into, right? Because her compound created an unhealthy mindset because she was so consistent with her health that it was an obsession that actually created an unhealthy mindset. And she talks about it more. So go into her um, YouTube, or maybe I'll see if I can find it. Maybe we can listen to something um, here. I'll see if I can find some stuff too. So, all right, ladies, 9.32, probably the longest warrior hour I've ever done, but I love you guys. Thank you guys so much for all the hard work today. 
Monday was a big day. Tomorrow we'll come back and um, I'll find some fun stuff for us to listen to. Cool? All right, ladies. Thank you so much for everything. I really appreciate it. Have a good day, okay? Bye. Ooh, Alicia. I just have a series of four things. Oh, I'm going to have to message Alicia about what she just posted in here.